Hey guys, what's up? This is Pants Art Dragon, and today we'll be doing the patch 5.13 tier list for mid lane. In this patch, some of the AP items have been changed a bit, and they did buff Moonglaive for some reason. And also, Riley's Crystal Scepter has been buffed pretty intensively, shooting up 40% slows on AoE magic damage. Although I do feel like some people don't realize its potential right now, and it's kind of like sleeper OP. And at the same time, I can see why people aren't building it, because it's not really in their build paths, and they gotta get their core items. Anyways, with all that being said, let's get started. Alright, so number 5 is going to be Ari. I didn't really have her in the tier list before because I felt like there were more powerful mids, but I do feel like she is very strong for solo queue, just not really for competitive as much as like other picks. So yeah, still good in solo queue. Really good for carrying people since her mobility is really strong, and along with that, her assassination potential. And when you're sieging turrets with Baron buff or just sieging it in general, you got decent poke with your Q, and if you do land that charm, everyone's going to go ham on whoever you charmed. She's also really hard to gank in lane because of her Q, and when she's level 6, it's like basically impossible unless you have hard CC. Alright, so next up at number 4 is going to be Azir. Alright, so this champion, he's really strong right now because of his zoning potential in team fights. Just putting down those sand soldiers in front of him and poking down the enemy. He's also pretty hard to gank in the landing phase because he can just WEQ out of there, which is a pretty large range escape. And of course when he's level 6, same thing with Ari, he can just use his ultimate and get away. And also, when contributing to the landing phase, he's got lots of CC with his WEQ. And of course, insecting people away from their turret, and then Azir's jungler can fall up more easier. So his all-in potential is really high. His landing phase is really good, especially when he's trying to poke down an enemy. But what are some cons of Azir? So first off, Azir isn't really that good unless you can play him to a really high level, which makes him really bad for people in like lower elos. And also a note of fact of that, I don't think people realize that they have to let Azir poke before starting a team fight. Or even say peeling for Azir because, well, the only peel he has is his R. And his base damage is actually really low and he relies a lot on his AP ratios. So if he does fall behind and he's like 0 and 2, he's not going to be that useful until he can get some items. Oh also, Rylai's Crystal Scepter is actually really strong on him too. But I do not know if people will start building this item on him anytime soon. Oh, and also, Victor is pretty good with Rylai's Scepter too. I'm just saying, 40% slow on his ultimate looks pretty OP to me. And it is actually a bug as confirmed by a rioter on reddit, so that'll be fixed next patch, but I do not believe that people are actually building rallies on him. It's probably because there's other items he should probably be getting, but I'm not sure. Anyways, Victor, super strong AP mid laner right now. You know, he's got a lot of tools with his instant bursting people with his ERQ, and his E is pretty good wave clear along with his superior late game. But the thing I like about him the most is that he scales really good with levels along with AP. What I mean by that is that let's say he goes like 0 and 3 in landing phase, he's still going to be good because his base damage is still strong. His Q's enhanced auto attack damage scales with levels, and so does his personal item, the Hex Core. This makes him really consistent for solo queue in my opinion. And also have you ever seen a victor in the late game where he just basically presses E on you and then Q and auto attacks you with a Lich Pink proc? It's like one hit KO if you're squishy. But yeah, that's just my opinion. Next up at number 2, we have Twisted Fate still. Now I swear to god, some people were actually questioning this Twisted Fate, especially on Reddit, and telling me why do you have Twisted Fate like number 2? And then I was like, huh, I don't know. Maybe it's because he has his ultimate which picks off stupid people. And like, say you're a jungler and you're going to gank top lane and dive him, then Twisted Fate comes along and, you know, counter ganks you. So he just has a lot of map pressure because of that. Second off, there's not a lot of assassins in this meta right now, so there's not a lot of people who can kill him instantly. And in team fights, if he survives for a long time, he's going to be throwing out a lot of gold cards which do stun for like 2 seconds. And also people are just rushing cooldown boots on him so they can constantly gank side lanes, and he just snowballs other side lanes and gets ahead. And at number 1 is going to be Rune Glaive Ezreal, which they buffed this patch, for some reason. Anyways, they did kind of nerf him this patch by taking out the Ludens Echo, procking it on his Q. And, you know, it kind of hurts his poke a bit, but, I mean, his AP ratios are still really strong. So it's like, whatever, I'll just build other items right now. So anyways, I don't think I mentioned this in the last video, but Rune Glaive changes his Q's physical damage into magic damage, which is pretty unique, which does help a lot since he has magic penetration coming from his Sork Shoes and his runes. And like the most OP part about him is that even if you miss some of your skill shots, they're on a fairly short cooldown so you can try again and hit the enemy. 
Of course, in a team fight, it does matter if you can hit those skill shots, but it is definitely much more easier to hit these skill shots since you're in a team fight scenario, and people tend to clump up more. Anyways, this guy's probably got the best late game out there as an AP mage right now, but just because all of his AP ratios are really high, his poke is really long range, and the spells are on a really low cooldown, especially with Q, reducing the cooldown of his other spells. Although, one con he does have is that he has a really weak laning phase, and he doesn't have much pressure early game. Next up we'll be doing some honorable mentions, and first up is going to be AP Kogma. And I do feel like in this patch he did get a buff because Rallys was buffed, and his ultimate does apply the 40% slow. And he can keep reapplying it because at level 16, his ultimate is on a 1 second cooldown, so it's basically infinite slows coming from Kogma. Well, more like chain slows on the same ability, but you know what I mean. And also, when he does hit level 16, you can basically say you won the game because it's very hard to win against a protected Kogma unless you can assassinate that chump. Next up, we have Vladimir, and with the Will of the Ancients change, he's actually better late game and mid game since he can heal off tanks better, as the Will of Ancients spell vamp is now calculated before magic resistance calculations. Although it kind of does hurt his early game since minions don't really have magic resist, and Will of Ancients was reduced to 15% instead of 20% to make up for that buff. It only really helps his E and R since his Q already had the big slow, so it does help him a bit. But I think people have other things to build than rallies on him. Next up is going to be Yasuo, and the thing is, he is a viable mid laner. And like, there's definitely several other viable mid laners out there, but I don't really include other champions just because there's too much out there. And if I don't list them, it doesn't necessarily mean they're bad. It's just, I think there are better mid laners out there right now. Anyways, talking about Yasuo, so Yasuo takes a lot of skill to play. Like before, you could play him and be like average at him and do really well on him. But now, but since they nerfed a few things about him, he's like more of a high risk, high reward champion. Like if he falls behind, he's kind of useless, right? But if he's ahead, he's like super powerful. And that's all I gotta say about him. Like if you're really good at Yasuo, go for it. Play him. He's pretty good in the right hands. Just don't pick him if you have a top lane who's an AD champion. Same with Varus. Don't pick an all AD comp. Those are just terrible. But what's not terrible about Varus is his Q. Now that shit is OP, because that shit is like Jace's EQ, but it's up more often. And he's got great initiation power or counter initiation with his ultimate, which does help for teamfights of course and helping the jungler gank for you. And he does scale well in the late game since he turns into an AD carry and has maximum percent health damage. One of his biggest cons of course is that he doesn't really have a lot of mobility, so he can easily be ganked and he can't really pressure the side lanes. But he does make up for it with his poke. Next up in Nerano Ventures, we do have Jace. So I do see him a few times in solo queue, but since I don't play Jace too often and only really play him in the jungle for fun, my good friend Sincerely Lin can emphasize on why he's a pretty decent mid right now. Hi, I'm Sincerely Lin. Panzer Dragon and I are on Team Zoo together, and he offered to let me tell you a little bit about Jace this patch. Jace has always been one of my favorite champions, and it's totally not because of the way he looks. Jace has the ability to poke squishies down and then morph into melee form whenever he needs to dunk even further on their faces. Because of this, I think he's insanely fun to play. He's a pretty good mid lane champion right now because of some changes he received in patch 5.11. Basically, you don't have to level up his ultimate anymore, so each skill has 6 levels instead of 5. Riot increased his Q based damage by 40, which makes his EQ poke combo even stronger. His melee form Q also received a buff. Turns out these changes give Jace a much stronger mid game. I know Varus is a hot pick at the moment and he seems like he's much better than Jace, but in my opinion Jace has so much more to offer even when his poke is down. I mean, Jace has a whole nother form to cast abilities in. Varus also lacks an escape making him highly susceptible to ganks, whereas Jace has his speed gate and his melee form Q which allow him to run away. However, I can also see why most people would consider Varus over Jace, since Varus's poke is almost as powerful as and up more often than Jace's EQ combo. Just keep in mind that, as you can see from my video clips, Jace has the mobility to roam a lot more often than Varus does. Hey guys, so thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. A big thanks to Sincerely Lin for helping me out with this video. Check out her stream at twitch.tv slash Sincerely Lin. She's got a pretty sexy voice, I know. So do check her out by clicking that link right there. And if that link doesn't work, then check out the description. And yeah, if you guys want to check out another tier list, the AD carry for patch 5.13, Check out that video right there. Um, Kalissa did get nerfed, and when and I think you guys want to see where she's at, right? And this is a new room, so you guys are probably wondering, but basically I moved rooms, so that's about it. And again, thank you guys for watching the video, and I will see you guys next time.
I was running through the six with my woes. Yeah. I was running through the six with my woes. You know how that shit go. You know how that shit go. You know how that shit go. Running through the six with my woes. You know how that shit go. 